spotlight around you keeps getting brighter and brighter, bigger and bigger opportunities. Here you are, main event on Fox, probably one fight away from a title shot, handling all the uh, promotion for this. What's what's the experience been like for you this week? Um, you know, I think that uh, one thing on the Ultimate Fighter that it got me prepared for was the media and, and dealing with this kind of stuff. You got to be a multitasker. Uh, doing the media is a part of the business, and uh, you just got to get used to it and suck it up because uh, this is an entertainment business after all. And uh, I'm an entertainer as much as I am a fighter, so it, it, it really doesn't bother me being a vain being a main event does not bother me and um, you know I can handle it it's it's not anything but something to get used to and uh, you know I'm a pressure type of person and I can handle all types of pressure so it's not a big deal I know a lot of people are looking at this as kind of a striker versus grappler affair you're obviously a well-rounded martial artist but at the end of the day can you look at it that simply that you know if you can get your grappling in play it's your fight if she's able to get going on her striking it's hers uh, this is my fight you know all around this is my job to uh, get in there and do what I know that I can do I'm not so much worried about what Valentine Tina does and, and more focus on what it is that I know I can do and uh, I'm a gamer I'm a fighter and uh, I'm ready to die and if you're ready to die you're ready to live should you know it's an entertainment business and, and you know Rhonda being we don't know and, and Misha retired there's kind of an opening for a star here right I mean the women's division do you look at yourself as maybe being the person that can do that or do you need to think about that yeah Gina Carano was the face of women's MMA and when she went out Rhonda became the face of MMA now that Rhonda's out I would love to be that person I would love to be that role model for these little uh, girls that are looking up to me or looking up for someone to look up to um, I would love to fill that role and I would love to be the face of women's MMA absolutely I've heard you reference Gina a couple times when talking about this whole issue do you feel the need to remind fans that she was around uh, Gina was a pioneer in women's MMA and she kind of uh, put women's MMA on the map as far as being a beautiful woman and being able to fight so I give her all the credit in the world and uh, you know I've always looked up to her as far as one of those uh, women that uh, was very beautiful but could fight as well. So if you can write your own script to beat Valentina and get the title shot, when would you like to contest for the title? Uh, as soon as possible. I'm ready to go. Um, I'm always in camp. I'm always training. I'm training year round and uh, I'm ready as soon as possible. In some ways, is this the perfect kind of, I don't want to say warm up, but the perfect way into a title fight, knowing the way the champion fights as well? Uh, you know, I asked for a title shot after I beat Kat Zingano and it wasn't available to me. They told me that Ronda was coming back. So as soon as I found out that Ronda was coming back, I said, I want to fight the best in the world. And, and Valentina was ranked ahead of me. So I asked for this fight. I got exactly what I wanted. I want to fight the best in the world and I want to compete against the best in the world. You know, I don't want to fight no tomato cans or no hand pick fights. I'm a tough fighter and I want to prove myself up against the best in the world uh, so that I can prove to myself that I am truly the best in the world. So uh, this is a great fight for me. This is my fight to win. And, um, you know, being that. Kat Zingano beat the brakes off of Amanda Nunes and I dominated Kat Zingano, I think that I can, it's fair to say that I can hang uh, with anybody that walks at 135 pounds inside that octagon, absolutely. Janetta, what's your best point against Valentina? Uh, uh, my determination to win, my will, my heart, my strength. I'm good everywhere. You have a main event here on Fox, you know, network television, a lot of people will be watching. How much have you thought about what you might say after the fight? Have you prepared for that at all to know that, you know, Mando is trying to say she's not even defending 135, so you have to kind of get that thing going. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think that there's a lot of competition still left at 135 pounds that she should maybe consider before trying to run to another division. And, uh, you know, uh, God willing, I get past this fight. I'm unbeaten in the UFC, and I'd rather, if I was a champion, want to clean out my own division before going to a different division. And if there was an undefeated girl fighting at 135 pounds, I would want to test my skills against her but if that's not the way that she wants it as long as all you guys know what the truth is uh, and 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 that's all that matters sorry I asked a couple questions there the first one was uh, how much you thought about post fight and, and what you might have to say I, I've thought a lot about post fight and uh, uh, God willing I get this win you guys are in for a treat is this your first time with your new striking coach Mike Fowling uh, it is yes um, why, why the change up uh, I, this is my third camp in Chicago. Uh, this is uh, the third time that I spent uh, a lot of my training camp over there. Um, it was a change of pace for me because I wanted to be closer to my jiu-jitsu instructor. And uh, my striking coach, uh, head coach Rick Little, wasn't able to um, move out, obviously, with me. But I fly him out. He's out here. Uh, he's been with me in Chicago, too, training. And uh, he's still the head of everything. Um, he's Him and I together is what got me here. And uh, he'll always be a part of my career forever. So you still do want to maintain that connection with the old camp back in the Pacific Northwest? Oh yeah, absolutely. 509 Spokane, Washington will always be my home and uh, I always will go there, you know what I mean? Uh, Sikh Jitsu is very much a part of my, my camp. It's what bred me and raised me as a babe. And uh, you know, it's just awesome to always evolve your game, always develop, always continue to add into your arsenal. And uh, like I said, he's still very much a part of my camp and I'm still very much with Sikh Jitsu and I'll rep them till the day that I die. Have you been prepared for the elevation here? I have. I came out three weeks early 
and uh, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go. I think that um, I came out with my strength and conditioning trainer too, and he said, you're ready, girl. So, so just waiting. The only thing left we can do is uh, wait for Saturday night. What was it like at the beginning guys. in terms of uh, the elevation and how much have you adapted and how does it feel now? It feels great. 